Hi everybody, my name is Theodora Nestrova. So you want to sound jack. This is purely meant to be a preliminary setup guide in how to get you up and running. If you have any problems, feel free to contact me. The first thing that we're going to do is look at Soundjack, the audio connection, and then we'll take a look at Jitsi Meet. And I'm just going to show you how to access these. Both of these platforms allow for lower latency connections than what we have become accustomed to throughout this uh, COVID-19 global health pandemic. If you are using your own computer, which is what we are doing today, what you need to do is you first need to go to this website, soundjack.eu. You can use the Jitsi Meet on your tablet or uh, smartphone, but Soundjack, you can purely use it on your computer unless you have one of these fast music boxes. Each device, is different. If you're using a PC, you are running Windows and that will be a little bit different for the security preferences and for all of these settings. You click to register, you choose your username that, uh, that you want people to see, uh, you choose your password. I'm going to go ahead and log in. It brings me directly to my profile. You go to this download tab. Um, I, and I want you to download whatever version for your device, um, you need. So here you see all the different versions and this is downloading the software that it needs to run Soundjack, um, onto your computer. If you are using your computer, the latest version is from August 28th. This will be updated. So regularly check this, there will be updates to this software. You will need to allow your computer to download it. On Mac, you go to system preferences up here on the little Mac screen, you go to system preferences, and then you are, when it opens system preferences, I go to security and privacy. The under general here, I unlock the lock. It'll show up here. Do you want to download Soundjack? It is completely safe. You say, yes, I would. You click the lock back to allow it to download. Then it sh once you have dragged it, the app into your applications folder, the Soundjack app, you will have it and you will have ready access to it. And what it looks like is a little black XLR mic jack, that's what it's called. And every time you use Soundjack from your computer, you need to have this running in order to make audio connections. So I have already done that. If you can see on the, on the right hand side here, um, I've already downloaded it and it doesn't open anything. Once I double click on the app from my applications folder, the Soundjack app, it doesn't actually pop up anything. So don't be alarmed. What it does is it just opens it. It is running in the background. This code, this software is running in the background and that's what allows you to use it. I need to have it running. If you don't, you'll see an error message that says, you have not, you have opened the stage without a uh, actively running Soundjack Jack. Um, and you will have to refresh, uh, go out, go back in, oh, make sure that it's open and that's, that's how you'll be ready. If you're using this fast music box, as I have shown in the beginning, it has the software in here on an SD card already. So uh, this is an external processing mini computer, which only runs Soundjack and you can program it, you can buy it, you can build it yourself. Um, it's great. I highly recommend it, especially for older devices, older machines, as my MacBook Air is actually, as, as a lot of us have, uh, to run Soundjack most optimally. Now I'm showing you the public stage. I'm showing you what you will see in terms of your Soundjack platform when you're using this on your computer. So what you, there are th things that you really don't want to mess around with some, some of these settings and settings that you will be messing around with within each connection actually in order to optimize it. So what you see here is expert settings. Fine, that, that is fine. That's the most optimized settings. You're in the public stage or once you, um, you know, have the friend stage use, you can do that. Manually accept calls. That means that you're going to be able to accept calls from anybody. You can change this to accept any call, decline any call. Um, this is your IP address right here, your personal IP address. Um, this arrow into the box is your input. Arrow out of the box is your output. 
as you can see here, I have Scarlett 2i2 USB because I am running uh, my audio and uh, both input and output through my Scarlett Focusrite Scarlett audio interface. And that's correct. If you have a USB mic, it'll show up differently. So you just need to choose your own device. Uh, 48,000 hertz, perfect. And the sample buffer is basically how many per seconds, how many little envelopes of information, we call them packets in the internet land, how many envelopes of information you are sending out per second. The lower the number, the better. The lower the number, the better the latency, which means the faster your connection is. And that's what we want for real-time online musical collaboration. Uh, so instead of 128, I will try, I would try to lower it to 64 if I am at the most optimized that my computer system can be, that my location is, it really depends on the connection that I'm having as well, and paramount my internet uh, service provider connection as well. Send channels one, if you are only having one input and that is all. That's all you need. There are multiple options here. There are up to 16, but that's all I have right now. I don't have a keyboard plugged in or anything, so it's just my mic. Here, this is your needle, your little um, VU meter. So it shows my, my signal, and as I'm speaking, it's going up. Adjust the volume uh, lower and higher of my own signal. So if I, I don't want to hear myself, I go all the way to the left. <laughs> if I want to hear myself more, I go all the way to the right. Below here, the sample buffers delay. You don't want to touch that. Send local audio only. Also not necessary just for your first um, connection. And then network buffer, another important one. This uh, network buffer is basically those packets that I was talking about. How many of those it's basically putting together, accumulating before it sends out the system. Um, and the sample buffer right up here and the network buffer are things on this left-hand side that you are going to m manipulate manually within each connection. So I want to turn your attention to those. Sample buffer can only be less than or equal to the network buffer, but both of these, the lower the number, the lower the latency, the better the connection, the faster the connection. Now, the final thing that you may toggle as well is your Opus codec. This is um, basically the quality. So we see here right now it's 96 uh, kilobits per second. We want it to be 192 because this is going to be in an optimal connection. This is going to just make the quality of the sound much better and it's going to smooth out any inefficiencies basically in the sound signal that we hear. Now I want to turn your attention on how you make a correct connection in the middle panel. Uh, here you see all of these users and these names. Um, your local host might be something that you want to just practice with before you make a connection with anybody else. How you do make a connection with any of these is you go right here to the green play button on the right. In order to make a successful connection though, they, their eye, their little eye icon needs to be green. If it's red or, or yellow, it, there's something wrong with their audio input or connection or something. Make sure that this little UDP that I'm going to show you here, um, port is set to 550. Otherwise it won't work and otherwise you will get a little trying signal here. It'll say trying um, on the right instead of showing your milliseconds latency. So you want to have ideally in next this UDP port 111. That is the most open that your ports can be. If you need more information about port forwarding, this is a very individual internet service provider thing. In addition to port forwarding, you will also want to set quality of service. You will go into your router and, and do it that way, um, as well as setting a static IP address for the device that you are using Soundjack on, the software. Uh, you can do that as well by referencing the guides and reaching out. So now I am connected to Alex via Soundjack, and what you are seeing is flashing red and green, like Christmas, um, is your jitter buffer packets. So that's how much it's waiting. These packets are waiting before they're sent out. 
Lower the number, lower the latency here, shows the latency on the right-hand side, this 29 milliseconds right now. Um, the higher the number, the more stable, the less dropouts, clicks, pops, et cetera, garbles. But also the, uh, low, the, hot, the more time it's going to send from me to him, him to me, round trip latency. Um, and this number will therefore increase. Now, I want to just show you that this is the connection that you will be making. You will optimize these three things. So remember the sample buffer, you're gonna be optimizing the network buffer, both on the left-hand panel here, and you're gonna be optimizing and manually manipulating this jitter buffer. And you can go up and down, right? Um, just a reference point, Musicians can collaborate from 25 feet. That roughly correlates to about 22 milliseconds without, so this is them collaborating without uh, us feeling any lag noticeably. So within your individual connections, even in group connections, you're going to have to take a little bit of time to play with this and optimize. A good test will be clapping one, two, three, four, or speaking it. In addition, the more rhythmical the music, the lower you want your latency to be. So the more in time that you want it to be, um, therefore. And if it's something that is more romantic and can be can be a little on the on the back end of the beat or or something like that, then you configure your own connections. These buffers, you configure and optimize them for the task at hand. Now, what's great about Soundjack is that it's peer-to-peer. -peer. So even if you have multiple connections, that's why the latency is so low because you're not going through a server. You're actually going individually to the person. It uses a lot of your system. My fan is currently running. I'm, I'm running Zoom as well. I would use Vivaldi as a light browser instead of Safari or Google Chrome on Macs. Uh, Firefox is also an option. You want to use the least amount of... Um, CPU for anything else that's going on. You can check your CPU in Max by going to the activity monitor, spotlight searching that way. The friends stage. So this is on the right hand side here. This, uh, when it's completed on the stage you see, um, you'll only see people that you have friended, kind of like Facebook, kind of like any social media that are in your circles. So you don't need to get bothered by seeing everybody's username, everybody who's on Soundjack in the entire world onto the public stage, which will go on in a second, but will be of great use to you in in connecting with your own students or with people in your musical collaboration circle. Something that I want to point out is that Zoom, the platform that we are most accustomed to using now, usually has at best a latency combining audio and video of upwards of 100. It's actually in reality usually around 300 and this is round trip and because it is compromising your audio and video as combining them together and also it's not a peer to peer connection it's a server so it goes out to a server and then it pings to the people that you are connecting with uh, this latency is increased incredibly whereas with soundjack and jitsi separating out the audio and the video signals you are lowering the latency in and of themselves in the softwares and you are lowering the latency by configuring and optimizing your signal chain. So now that you've created an audio connection on Soundjack, and this is running optimally, you're going to go to Jitsi instead of Zoom for a just lower latency video connection. So Jitsi, we go to meet.jit.si. There's also an app that you can use like I said, on your phone. So how that works is you don't need a actual account. All you need to go is to meet.jit.si and then you have to create, in order to create a new meeting, all you need is four unique words. So ours is warm tracks resist brightly. So all you need to do is send that to, to your connections in these four unique words. Uh, they don't need an account, it's as easy as that. And when I go in, as you see, it's going to say join meeting, enter my name. It needs to allow my microphone and camera. I'm going to say allow. Um, this will also turn up allowing various things in Soundjack as well, um, just so you're aware. I'm going to turn off my audio. I'm going to mute it because I'm already using it for Soundjack, but I'll keep my video and I'm going to join this meeting. Here we are. 
outsourced to a lot of these vi great videos, great tutorials that Dr. Ian Howell has made, that um, Overland, that these schools have also made Nicholas Perna as well. And I would recommend that you watch the tutorial videos on Soundjack itself. The tech tutorial videos are located right here, the FAQs. Uh, join the NATS, the National Association of Teachers of Singing, does Soundjack group online. There are many options for you to get individual help if this isn't working as smoothly as I'm showing you right now. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this and that it was informative. Please let me know if you have any questions. Have fun Soundjacking.